Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel Python for Microscopist. In the last couple of videos, uh, we started talking about machine learning and I promised to get back to that topic in the next couple of videos, but uh, I, I'm inserting this one video in between to make sure those of you who are working with proprietary images, you know, depending on whoever the microscope manufacturer is, it could be uh, Zeiss, it could be uh, Leica or Olympus, you know, you are you probably have a proprietary image format that you would like to convert. So this uh, tutorial covers the topic of uh, how to open them in Python so you can go ahead and do your image processing. Now, uh, if you come from an electron microscope background, you probably don't deal with proprietary formats that much because most microscope vendors use TIFF or, uh, you know, you can export images in any format. But light microscopy is a bit more complicated. And uh, why is it a bit more complicated? Let me just quickly give you an example. For example, uh, if you have a multi-well plate, yeah, this is nothing but uh, a whole bunch of, uh, let's say, wells. Typically, I think it comes in 96 wells, but it can be a smaller one. So each well can be filled with some uh, material that needs to be imaged, right? I mean, some biological material that uh, uh, needs to be imaged. So that means the image format, whatever the image that gets stored, needs to understand that it is coming from a specific, a specific well. So that is one dimension that we need to add. And uh, typically it's called scenes, let's say scene one, scene two, scene three, scene four, so on. So for each scene, meaning for each well, uh, it could be a time series image, right? A time series is nothing but, okay, at time zero, you image it. Okay, you see, I don't know, 100 cells. At, uh, after 10 minutes, some cells grow or die, depending on your, your experiment. So then uh, you count the number of cells, time, uh, and so on. So as the time goes by, you keep imaging the same well to see how uh, the cells evolve uh, over that period of time. So that is another dimension that's required uh, 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 as part of your image. Now, in, uh, in addition to that, you know, uh, another dimension would be uh, a Z dimension. If you have a confocal microscope, you can actually collect uh, 3D images, right? Uh, so the Z slice, as you're actually going through the uh, or, or looking deep into the into your sample, you are adding more slices. So this is your Z slice or, uh, you know, uh, so this is one other uh, dimension. And for each slice, the image can be multi-channel. So typically you, uh, uh, you know, you have multi-channel images in biosciences, you know, especially if you're looking at again confocal microscopy. So one channel can be, uh, an example could be DAPI channel. If you are interested in counting nuclei, that uh, is a good, I mean, which appears in blue. So your images, uh, your nuclei appear in blue, so it makes it easy for you to uh, count them. So this is one other dimension. On top of that, each channel can be, I mean, in this example, I just said blue, but each channel can be a, a RGB image. I mean, typically it is a, a binary image or a gray image, but it can be RGB image. So within, this is another dimension. And finally, each of this RGB image, this is this this is uh, this has certain number of pixels in uh, x and certain number of pixels in y, right? I mean, it has like width and height. So think of containing all of this information in your images. Uh, I mean, one single image can have all this information contained within it. So that's why I think uh, different companies like Zeiss, for example, handles this in certain way that they think is the most efficient, like uh, handles it their own way. So that's why there are these proprietary formats. Now, uh, uh, nothing wrong with that. Obviously, they're doing it for a good reason. Now, how do we open these proprietary images uh, to, uh, first of all? So let me switch to uh, uh, the screen. Uh, I mean, I got hold of a couple of Zeiss format images, CZI images. So let me show you exactly how these images look like uh, in, in their uh, software. And uh, Zeiss uses a software called a Zen, Zen Lite. In fact, it's free to download. So I just downloaded it from online. 
and uh, 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 I can open Zeiss proprietary images in their software. Obviously, the point of this uh, uh, lecture is to show you how to open it in Python, which is very easy. If you if you're interested in only in that, just scroll the video all the way to the end. But uh, just want to show you how images can contain different types of information. So in this case, this specific image uh, uh, has multiple channels, right? I mean, if I turn the red and green off, you can see the nuclei show showing up only in, uh, in in blue. Now, when I turn the red, green on and then turn the uh, blue off, it uh, gives you uh, another type of information. And if I turn the red on, it's a different information. Red and blue can be on at the same time. So if you want to look at, uh, study the association of these two, you can also do that. So this is multi-channel image that has, uh, or, or you know, multiple channels as the name suggests. Now it can also be a time series, like I mentioned. So in this case, this is only a single channel image showing the nuclei, but it is a time series. So as the time goes by, the cells are moving, as you can see. Yeah. So this is a time series uh, image. And uh, finally, let me just show you a multi-scene image. So this is, uh, let's say, well number one. This, uh, I have 96 scenes here. So well number one, well number two, well number three, well number four. I guess in cer certain cases, the images are not like in focus, but it gives you an idea how uh, it can be multi-scene. So just to summarize, images uh, for especially light microscopy can be very complicated because you have uh, a lot of information packed into these images. So now let's switch to Python and see how we can unpack that so we can work on the information, you know, we can work on the image that we are interested in. So for example, let's take this example of, okay, I have this image. How do I load this image, uh, uh, SCZI file, which is the Zeiss format, and then turn the red and green off and only look at the blue so I can just count the nuclei. Okay, so let me switch to the spider interface. In fact, before we type anything, first let's go uh, to Google and let's search for CZI file Python, right? So in this case, this is a Zeiss format that we're looking at, which is CZI. If it is an Olympus format, if it is a Leica format, go ahead and type whatever you're looking for. And go ahead and search for, uh, you know, uh, for those keywords. And in this case, I'm going to click on the first one. It says CZI file pi pi right so this is the library that uh, some good samaritan christoph uh, golke uh, created from uc irvine so this is the library uh, he actually created so all we need to do is pip install czi file so i'm going to copy this i'm going to go back to spider type it here and then go ahead and install it pip install czi file i've already installed it so let's see what it says here but uh, this is how you can actually get li this library into uh, into your uh, spider package. So, uh, I mean, it says already satisfied for me because I already installed it uh, a while ago. So now that it's there, how do we import it? You know, so import CZI file. That's it. And now uh, you can actually go back and then look at the documentation. If it is good, it'll tell you exactly how to read these images. It's just, it looks like it's just imread, whatever that file name is, okay? So let's do, uh, in fact, my image equals to imread, sorry, czi file.imread, okay? And uh, I'm gonna open the same file, osteo, O S T E O S A R C O M A osteosarcoma 01.czi. Okay. Now, before I do anything, I'll just hit run and see if it's working. Okay. No issues there. And you see here, this image is unsigned integer 16 and it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 dimensions. If you remember, if you remember, uh, let me open my uh, the last slide again uh, just to show you right there. Okay, let me go through the animation. So scene one, two, three, four, five, six. Six different uh, uh, dimensions here. I'm not sure which one is what. Maybe I'm. Uh, I don't think the documentation actually talks about it. But I think it's kind of clear because this image is a three-channel image and it has X and Y. I can uh, guess that this is the number of channels right there, and this is X and that is Y, and uh, and and the others could be the time series and uh, so on.
okay so now that i have here let's actually extract these three and ignore everything else this is not a z stack so i see only one uh, over there so if you uh, uh, so let, let's go ahead and just label uh, uh, create a new variable called image one and what do i want to extract okay so from this numpy array from this array up there i want to i do not want whatever that first uh, parameter is i don't want the second one but i want everything from these three okay so i'm just creating a subset right there and if i run this you should see our image one is uh, has a dimensions of three by one one zero four or by one three seven six okay and these are the three channels and if you remember uh from from this zen the channel that we are interested in is channel number three yeah usually it goes along the same lines channel number one two and three well in python it's channel number zero one and two so let's go ahead and first let's look at uh, i'm going to call this image uh two yeah i'm out of creativity so my image two is nothing but my image one okay except I want the zeroth and X and Y, I want all pixels. Okay, I'm not gonna uh, uh, cut down my uh, uh, X and Y there or crop my image there. That, this is as easy, that's it. So now my image two is nothing but the red channel. So let's actually, um, how do we plot this? Let's use pyplot import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Okay, plt dot im show image. What did we call this? Image two. Okay, so when I run this, so there you go. That's the uh, that's the image. In fact, let's actually make this a bit more easier. I should say a bit easier to read or see. And let's use the color map of hot, so it looks. A bit thermal image you see there you go that is the image and by the way if you look at uh, the first channel right so if you turn these two off this is exactly what we see over there so this is the first channel there you go extracting the second channel is exactly I mean very similar so all I'm doing is typing one over there go ahead and run it and there you go I mean I can change the color to green uh, because that's how the original image looks like but it doesn't matter it's just a visualization so this image is right here okay but for our cell counting purposes we want the third channel okay so we want this one all of our cells right there I mean sorry nuclei right there and uh, this is nothing but this image okay so this is how easy it is literally a couple of lines so all I'm doing is import CZI file and then uh, imread, I mean, follow the documentation and then look at how this uh, it's structured and then kind of figure out exactly uh, uh, what dimension corresponds to what. And then uh, that's pretty much it, extract. And now at this point, I can go ahead and continue uh, say, using this image, image two, and then segmenting it and counting nuclei if I want to count nuclei. So uh, because I have a ZEISS file, I can, I'm able to show this. I tried to search online for other files, but I couldn't, I couldn't find them. But how do you, if it is not a ZEISS file, if it is, uh, if it is, for example, let's say uh, Olympus file, which I think is OIF. So I think the same gentleman also, uh, I mean, you can go back to Google and search, but I think if I, let's give it this a try, OIF file, OIF yeah i think there it is so here it is this is if you have olympus this is uh, uh again pretty much very similar to opening a, a czi file i haven't tried uh, leica but go ahead and google search for uh python leica you know whatever you know open file in uh, python and then you'll, you'll i'm pretty sure you'll find a way to uh, open them in Python. So I hope you found this tutorial to be useful. Now, hopefully you can open these uh, uh, proprietary images. You can also use, by the way, bioformats. Uh, that's uh, the same, uh, you know, the same library that they use in ImageJ if you ever try to open your images in ImageJ. Uh, so that's the same same library. So you can also use bioformats, Python, uh, but uh, uh, 
but uh, using the CZI file or OIF file may be uh, a bit easier than going through the bioformats route. Because, I mean, I haven't tried that. That's why I'm talking. Uh, I'm saying that. So uh, anyway, I hope you found this to be useful, educational. If so, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and uh, like this video. And uh, let me continue talking about machine learning in the next videos. Thank you very much.